Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single one of those problems. If you are interested in watching the original solutions to those, these problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing, redoing the problems and we are on page number 100 I believe and 171. Please turn to it. Page number 171, the very first problem in the second column. Page 171. Now before we actually start with number 137, problem number 137 which is already on the blackboard here, before we actually start with problem number 137, I want you to quickly look at the last problem on the page, problem number 139. Problem number, 100, problem number 139 is what is known as what is known as work time problems. They appear on a regular basis, both in the GRE and the GMAT. And I just finished taping a video where we solve a whole bunch of these problems, G, uh, work time problems that is. And the very first problem that I taped in that video was problem number 139, the very last problem that you see on this page, on page number 171. So we're not going to do that problem again. Number 139, problem number 139, if you want to watch the solutions to it, just type in this text, search, just type in this, uh, this, this tag, just type in GRE slash GMAT work time problems along with my name Kishwani, work time, pro work time problems Kishwani, or GMAT work time problem Kishwani, it will pop right up. The very first problem we solved in that video was this problem number 139. And if you want some extra practice with these problems, then, then there are a whole bunch of them as I said, uh, I, I believe I did eight of them. So, right now we're going to do number 137 and 138. Let's take a look at 137. In 137 we are told that this person took on a job. And we are told that uh, it, is, it is regular hourly wage. It is regular hourly wage. It is regularly, uh, regular hourly, they call it rate. I'm going to change it to wage. Because we're going to use W to represent his hourly wage. It is regular hourly wage. The job would have cost $336. So what happened was that you hired this, this, uh, this contractor. The contractor estimated how much, how, how long the job will take. He knows what he wants for an hourly wage. He multiplied his hourly wage by the estimated amount of time. For example, if he thought that the job was going to take 12 hours, and if he wants, if you, if he thought the job was going to take 12 hours, and if he wants $3 per hour, then he would have quoted you. $36 for the job, which is exactly what he did here. He quoted you $336 based on what he thought uh, it will take, how long it will take to do the job. Are you with me? It turned out that when he started the job, the job actually ended up taking him four more hours than he had estimated. He was not correct in his estimate. It ended up taking him four more hours. There must have been some complication. And he spent four more hours on the job than he thought he was going to take. As a result, because the price is already fixed, this is a contract price. This cannot be changed. Therefore, because of the fact that he, ex he worked four extra hours, as a result, as a result, we are told that his hourly wage was actually two dollars less than what he would have liked it to be. Whatever his hourly wage was, when he did the calculation, he realized that he actually made two dollars less per hour. The question is very straightforward. How many number of hours did he estimate? Estimated number of hours were how many? Estimated number of hours, which we are going to represent with E. We're going to use W for the hourly wage. How many hours did he estimate? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. So we know, we know that uh, his, his estimated number of hours was E. We also know that his hourly wage is W, because that's what we are using for symbol, W for the hourly wage and the number of hours. If you want to multiply, if you want to multiply these two quantities together, that should equal the amount that he quoted for the job, which is $336. But we also told, but we also told that when he started the job, the job ended up taking him four more hours, four more hours. So whatever the number of hours that he estimated, he actually ended up spending four more hours than he, had, than he thought he would. As a result, he did not get W dollars per hour, he did not get W dollars per hour, but he actually made two dollars less than what he would have liked to make. So his hourly wage turned out to be W minus two. His, his hourly wage, 
his actual hourly wage times the actual number of hours of course also has to equal $336 because that's what he accorded for the job and that's what he got for the job. So these two quantities are equal. Now let's begin our story. We're going to open the parentheses. So E times W is EW. E times negative 2 is negative 2E. 4 times W is 4W. And 4 times negative 2 is going to be negative 8. And here we have E times W right here. E times W appears on both sides. I don't like the way it came out. E times W appears on both sides. So we can we can uh, draw, uh, subtract E times W from both sides and get rid of it. That's it. What are we left with? What we're left with is this quantity right here. We have, right here is our 4W. So 4W equals, bring the 2E to this side and bring the 8 to the other side. 4W equals 2E plus 8, which of course if we divide the whole thing by 2, we get 2W equals E plus 4, which means W equals E plus 4 over 2. E plus 4 over 2. This is, this is what we get at the end. Are you with me so far in the story? Okay, let's continue. We need the room. We're going to continue here. We're going to use this equation now. W equals, we just found out, but after all this manipulation, that W has to equal E plus 4 divided by 2. Now, we know that E times W, we know that estimated number of hours times is wage has to equal 336. We're going to substitute this W, value of the W from here, in here. So W equals E plus 4 over 2. So E times W, which equals E plus 4 times over 2, equals 336. Multiply both sides by 2, and you can get rid of the 2, W here. And this is 335 times 2 would have been 700, so this is going to be 702, I believe. No, 335 would have been seven, 335, I, I'm not thinking straight, 335 times 2 would have been 670. It's going to be 672. 672. 672. So, so far, stay with me in the story. It's very important that we stay in the story. So what we have at the end is this. This has to be true. E times E plus 4 has to equal 672. Now remember, what the question is asking is E. What's the value of E? Okay, are you still with me? Now we have two choices. From this point on, from this point on, we have two choices to go. One is to actually open it up and solve, set it up as a quadratic equation and solve the quadratic equation. That's one way, very traditional way. Another way is that we can cheat a little bit. It's a good idea now at this point to look at the answer choices because the answer choices express the value of E. Question was, 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 the, was the, what was the estimated number of hours? And the answer choices are going to give us the estimated number of hours. We can plug those values in here and see which one works. It has E times 4 more than E has to equal 672. Like, let's look at the answer choices, shall we? Let's look at the answer choices. We're going to do it. Where can we do it? Let's do it right here. Let's do it right here. Okay, stay with me in the story. As I always tell you, answer choice E is 12 times 16. Ask, well, 12 times 16, no, just give me one second here. Answer choice E says 12. This is our E. This is our E. That's the answer choice E. But when I say E, I meant the estimated number of hours. Right here, this, this E right here. Let's present the answer choice E with a capital letter. So E, e times E plus 4 is what we're looking at. Has to equal 672 and see if you can, see if you can follow my logic. If the answer choice E, if the answer choice E were correct, then according to the answer choice E, the estimated number of hours is 12. Are you with me? Answer choice E says that the estimated number of hours that we're looking for is 12. Well, if E is 12, then E plus 4, E times E plus 4, E plus 4 would have to be 16. Well, as we can clearly see here, we already know, it's very simple, we can see, we know 20 times 20, 20 times 20 is 400, 20 times 20, we know is 400, we don't know what 12 times 16 is, but whatever the 12 times 16 is, it's less than 400, it's hell of a lot less than 672, 12 is too small, 12 is too small, estimated number of hours could not possibly have been 12, because had it been 12, then E times E plus 4 would have been equal to 672, it is not, it's much too small. Let's look at answer choice, answer choice D. 
Answer choice D says, I'm going to pick up a speed a little bit. Answer choice D says 14. Let 14 be the case. Then 14, this is our E, remember? E plus 4, E plus 4 would have been 14 plus 4, which is 14 times 18. Again, we have, this is less than 20 times 20. 20 times 20 is 400. We're looking for 672 for crying out loud. This is, D is too small. Let's look at answer choice C. C says, C says 16. 16 times 20, again, E times E plus 4, this is our E plus 4, and this is our E. E times E plus 4, 16 times 20, it's going to be less than 400. 20 times 20, as we already said several times, is 400. C is too small. We did E, D, C, let's look at answer choice B. The suspense is killing me. Where can we do answer choice B? I don't want to erase anything on the blackboard. Where can we do answer choice uh, B? Well, uh, D, C, E, D, and C are gone. They are too small. E, D, and C are gone. They are too small. Let's look at answer choice uh, B. Answer choice B says 24. And now if E is 24, then E plus 4 would have to be 28. Voila, that's our answer. How do we know that's our answer? This is how we know this is our answer because answer choice A says, answer choice A says, 28. If E is 28, then E plus 4 would have to be 32. Now listen what we're going. Okay, again, understand the logic. That's what you have to do. You have to find ways to save seconds. Do you understand? Even if you save two seconds, that, that's important. We're looking for 672. 672. Okay, watch what happens. If you were to multiply 28 by 32, this is our E and this is our E plus 4. If you were to multiply 28 by 32, in the unit digit, what we'll get is 8 times 2. In the unit digit, you, I hope you're able to see that we should get 8 times 2. 8 twos are 16. This answer, whatever it is, this answer, whatever it is, this quantity, whatever it is, will end in a 6. Will end in a 6. 672 ends in a 2. We're down to B or A. It's either B or A. It can be A because A would end in a 6. It has to be this one. 4 times 8 is 32. This is going to end in a 2. Whatever this quantity is, it's going to end in a 2. Is this quantity right here. The answer is B. The answer to this question is B. The estimated number of hours was 24. He had estimated that it would take him 24 hours to finish the job. It ended up taking him 28 hours to finish the job. And as a result, he made $2 less than he had anticipated. Than anticipated, rather. He made $2 less than what he would have liked to make. That's what. Now, if you want to verify this thing, if you want to verify, it's actually very easy to verify. Let's verify up here. It only takes a second. It doesn't take that long to actually see that 24 is, in fact, the answer because we can verify it very quickly right here. We know that this has to be true. Estimated number of hours times the hourly wage has to be same as the estimated number of hours plus 4 because it took him 4 more hours than he anticipated times the wage that he would have liked to make minus the two dollar that less that he made. This has to hold. So we're going to put in 24 for E and see if it works. So 24, 24 and wage we know, right here is the wage. If E, if e is 24, if you're going to claim that E is 24, then wage has to be E plus 4, 24 plus E, E plus 4 over 2. 24 plus 4 is 28, 28 divided by 2 is 14, so it's 24 times 14 has to equal E plus 4. This is getting very crowded and very ugly, I don't like it. Let me start again. E is 24 right here, 24 times W, which is E plus 4 over 2. 24 plus 4 over 2 equals, and then our E again is 24, 24 plus 4 times W, which we just found out. We're not going to rewrite this entire thing again. 24 plus 4 is 28. 28 divided by 2 is 14. So it's going to be 14 minus 2. And then we'll see what happens. So here we get 24 times, what did we say here? 28 divided by 2, 14. And here we get 28 times 12. There you go. We're almost done. Divide both sides by 12. If we divide both sides by 12, this 12 goes out and 24 becomes 2. And 2 times 14 is same as 28. 2 times 14 is same as 28, you see? 
The answer is 24. Let's go on to the next one, number 138. Just give me one brief second. I have yet to understand I have yet to understand the notion of one brief second because from what I understand and from what I was told a second is a standard is a, is a, is a standard measure of unit there's no such thing as a one brief second and one not a brief second it's a figure of a speech we are told that P over Q is less than 1 we are also told that P and Q are both positive P and Q are positive and we'll see we'll see the importance of this statement the fact that we are told that P and Q are positive in a second the question is which of the following must be true which of the following must be true this is actually a very simple question very silly question as a matter of fact so if P if P over Q is less than 1 we can multiply both sides by Q we can multiply both sides by Q and what is it that allows us to multiply both sides of the inequality without having to worry about whether or not this is going to switch the direction of the inequality because if you multiply both if you multiply an inequality by a negative number then of course the direction of the inequality switches so what is it here that allows us to multiply both sides of the inequality without having to worry about switching the direction of the inequality the answer is right here because we are told that p and q are both positive so if we do that q drops out and what we find is that p is less than q i'm making actually too much fuss about it I'm making too much fuss about it. Uh, so we find out that P is less than Q, which in turn implies that Q must be greater than P. If Q is greater than P, then Q over P has to be greater than 1. That's all. That's all. Uh, we made too much fuss about it, nothing. We could, have, we could have seen from here that if P divided by Q is less than 1, then this itself, without doing any of this work, this, this, this in itself implies that if P over Q is less than 1, that Q over P has to be more than 1. Of course, if, 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 uh, if 3 over 4 is less than 1, then 4 over 3 has to be more than 1, of course. We made it too much fuss about nothing. There's, there's, nothing much in the, there's nothing in this problem. I'm just wasting time, yours and mine both. As I said, if you want to, if you want to look at the solution to number 139, I have already done it. It's the very first problem in this in this video here. Just look for GRE, GMAT, work, work time problems. And the very first one is there. I'm warning you, it is actually, it turned out to be actually a very long video. I didn't mean to do it. I should have done it in two parts. I should have done four problems in one part and four in the other part. I did not do it. So I'm going to leave it like this and see what happens. And if, uh, if it doesn't work out, then I'll, I'll probably delete it and make, an, make two more videos with uh, two parts in it. But right now as it stands, it has eight problems in it. And it is close to 48 minutes long. I know, it's a hell. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.